Hi there, and welcome back to another of Hartford Development Group's uh, Do Good Better Luncheons. Uh, we're very fortunate today to have Stacy Silk Rome, who is really an expert in branding. Um, Stacy's the principal of a company called Brand New, which is a strategic marketing company. And uh, Stacy's going to talk to us about the five steps to brand. Uh, to a brand audit, five simple steps for repositioning and revitalizing your brand. And, and Stacy's got an unbelievable breadth of uh, experience, not only in the nonprofit world, where she's worked with over a hundred nonprofits in different uh, areas like the arts, culture, and education, but she's also worked in the for-profit world with over 125 different companies throughout 125 different uh, countries. Uh, she's worked with SD Lauder, Avon, Donna Karen Cosmetics, uh, to just to name a few. Uh, uh, Stacy and I also are alums from Emory. We, we talk about that often. And then Stacy's also got some uh, certifications in marketing from the Yale School of Management and the London School of Economics. So she really does bring a great wealth of information uh, all around branding and marketing. So we're really looking forward to this conversation. So welcome, Stacy. Thank you, Scott. I'm looking forward to, to sharing um, hopefully some information that'll help people during this crisis. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So um, obviously this is, you know, very difficult time for everybody on, on so many levels. Um, you know, with work, it's, it's very challenging. There's a lot of uncertainty, but there is one positive that we can um, point to now as well. And that is that, you know, people aren't serving the weeds every day. You know, you're not kind of putting out fires and checking off your to-do list. And that's what makes now an ideal time to kind of take a step back and look at your organization or your brand. You know, your organization is your brand more objectively. I think this is really a great time to look at things through a new lens. And when you have that kind of distance, I think you can almost look at your organization the way your stakeholders do in, you know, in that more objective way. And I think it also allows you to come up with solutions in a more creative way. If you think about the fact that you never kind of have those light bulb moments when you're sitting at your desk, they happen when you're in the shower or when you're driving in the car. So that same kind of idea, it's like having that distance from your day to day does allow you to think more creatively. So now that you have that time to do things and that distance from your organization, you can do a brand audit. And when I say brand audit, I'm talking about really going through everything for your organization. So basically the brand audit is just a 360 degree holistic examination of your brand or your organization. So, you know, having that distance from your brand or your organization means you can kind of see the forest through the trees finally. So in terms of how to begin, if you kind of think about the fact that maybe now you're blocking out time on a Saturday to reorganize your closets or reorganize your drawers, well, reorganize your brand. Um, it's really, you know, a worthwhile project and it's something you might not have the opportunity to do again for a very long time. We kind of hope it'll be a long time till this happens again. So you don't want to squander this great opportunity. And, and I just want to say, you yeah. know, now without without our commutes, we, we are having a lot more time to focus on different things. So yeah, this so is perfect. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. It's true without the commute. There's a lot of time saving there too. Yeah. Uh, so once you do complete the audit, you want to really take that learning and chart your course forward. Um, in other words, you're going to take that time to rethink your brand. And then you want to respond to what you've learned by creating new strategies and tactics to help you reposition and revitalize your brand. So let's dive into a quick five steps for doing your brand audit. Okay. So the first one revolves around your positioning. Um, so with a brand, you would say, what's your positioning in the marketplace? For nonprofits, you might say, what is the positioning of your organization in your particular sector? You know, what are those in your same space, your competitors, what you say your competitors or maybe your peers, what are they doing and how do you stand in relation to them? 
So obviously the first step is to identify who they are. Who are the people or the organizations, I should say, who have the same mission that you have? Um, who are you competing against for share of mind or for donors or for grants? And look at, you know, even what are they doing right? Like, what are some things that maybe we even want to emulate? Well, you know, what are some best practices that you're, that they're using that maybe you want to adopt? Look at their messaging um, and what tools are they using to reach their stakeholders? What's the scope of what they're offering to their stakeholders? Um, maybe there's services or programs that they've added that make them more competitive than you now. And how do you compare? And you want to look at their positioning and their messaging versus yours. You know, how have they evolved and have you kept pace? So, for example, you know, maybe your competitors have added certain things and your messaging right now, your about statement or your boilerplate that you use for your um, press releases, maybe you're claiming that you are the only one or the biggest, you know, one that does certain things. But maybe the competition has evolved and you, you can't make those claims anymore. So you want to make sure that um, your messaging is, is current and accurate and relevant. And maybe your organization has made strides. Maybe there are a lot of things that you're doing now that you never updated your about statement or your, your boilerplate. And so you're not kind of getting credit for those things because you're not communicating them. Hey, Stacey. Uh, so yeah. uh, quick question. So we, um, when, we're, when we're looking at our competitors or colleagues out there, should we be looking at their websites? Should we be looking at their social media presence? What are areas we should be looking at? Definitely their websites, um, any material, you know, um, looking at their press. Um, so going online and doing a search. But the, the other thing, which I was going to say now is you can do some really interesting reconnaissance by looking at their social media, because when you look at their social media, there's indicators that you can actually see. So you can see how many people are engaging with their content and what kind of content that they're posting most people are engaging with, um, what's kind of resonating with the people who are your stakeholders, um, who's liking and commenting and sharing their content. You can see kind of who those people are and so those kinds of cues are really valuable. And you can, you know, also can just compare their numbers to the kinds of numbers that you're getting. But social media is very interesting because it, it's all visible to you. You can see. So that's an interesting kind of reconnaissance to do. Great. Um, and then once you've done that and you have that kind of better sense of where you stand in relation to your competitors, you can benchmark yourself in various ways. Um, you know, you may want to think about now that you have a sense of what they're doing, revisit your messaging and how do you, what, what can you claim is unique about you? What's your unique selling proposition? You want to, you know, kind of make sure that you're carving that out. Um, and again, looking at their best practices and what are some things that you can adopt. Also, you can look at where they're missing the boat. You know, maybe you're going to see where there's some white space that you can fill in. So that's a good opportunity for you to, to grab. Great. So the second step is um, based on your stakeholders. Do your current strategies really align with what your stakeholders want and need from you? Do you have a really good sense of, of what your stakeholders want and need? Or are you just kind of guessing? You know, I work with a lot of organizations and they're kind of holding on to old information. So it might be really old survey results that aren't relevant anymore or just kind of different things that have worked their way into the company's culture and they just kind of hang on to those, but they haven't really revisited where their stakeholders are today. So obviously surveying your stakeholders is the best way to get some real world true feedback on how your brand or your organization is perceived. And as we know with these online surveys, it's super easy, super quick and very cost-effective. Um, and, um, and, and do you recommend any uh, surveying tools that are out there? Uh, we've used SurveyMonkey. Yeah, I've just always used SurveyMonkey. Um, same thing. Um, okay. And um, I think what you find is when you do these surveys, certain themes really start to emerge and bubble up. And those are good things for you to want to maybe probe 
in you know a little bit deeper so maybe do some focus groups at a later date um and another great thing to do with the surveys is if you've asked you know take out some old surveys and look at some questions that you've asked in the past mm -hmm. and ask them again because you can see how much the needle has moved you have that sort of baseline mm -hmm. from your last survey and you can see if you've really um, moved the needle in any way and something that i always find fascinating on these surveys is um you know i always ask a question around something like if if you had to tell a friend about such and such organization, how would you describe it? And the thing, and it happens a lot, and it's oh, but it surprises me every time, is that the people who you think are closest to your organization, like your board or your staff, are like kind of off base. Like they they don't really have all the accurate information about your organization. So if you think about the fact that you're they're your ambassadors in the community. And they don't really kind of have a total beat on what you're all about. Um, you know, you need to work on the marketing messaging. So, right. you know, what you want to do is once you start to see how people perceive you and where you need to fix things with your messaging so that it is more accurate and more effective, make sure you're asking those questions like I just described. Ask them again in the future. And that's kind of your report card to see have you moved the needle like now you've done some you know you've rejiggered your positioning do people now have a better understanding of what your organization stands for um obviously you want to ask the right questions otherwise it's sort of garbage in garbage out you want to make sure the survey is really short and tell people up front it's only going to take five minutes or ten minutes because that improves your chances that your respondents will complete the survey um, now days most people offer incentives for completing the survey so people are kind of used to getting them so if you don't offer it you might not get a huge response so you know it can be simple something as simple as putting people's names in a raffle to get a gift card something like that um you also want to make sure you're asking the questions framing them in the right way you don't want to kind of lead the witness you don't want your questions to be biased to get people to say what you want them to say so you have to make sure you're asking them in a way that's that's kind of objective um it's always a good idea to have a mix of qualitative questions that are open-ended questions because with those questions you are getting responses that are really top of mind what comes top of mind to what your respondents think about the organization and then mix them with the quantitative, which are the ones with the kind of radio buttons. Um, and I will say the quantitative ones are easier to tabulate for obvious reasons. To go through the open-ended responses, they're valuable, but it's going to be more time consuming. Great. Um, and then I always like to add a place for respondents to just write something in. Maybe there's something you didn't address with your questions. So let them add anything that they think is pertinent. And then the last thing I'll just say about the surveys is, um, you know, working for some really big major corporations, we would spend unbelievable amounts of money on market research. And I saw it time and time again, where management would cherry pick the responses and just pull out the things that supported their arguments for why they wanted to do a certain strategy or why they wanted to bring a certain product to market. And they just, jettison everything else that they, you know, that came through on the survey. So you really owe it to yourself to be open-minded and take the good and the bad and, and learn from it. Because um, people have a tendency to do that, to really um, look at it, you know, filter the responses through that lens. Sure. Um, so the third step in the brand audit has to do with communications. Um, are your communications cohesive? Are they effective? Is your messaging compelling and current? Kind of what we talked about in step one in terms of uh, looking at your competition and making sure your message is still accurate and relevant. And is your brand identity consistent? So this is one of my favorite exercises. I always like to do this with my clients is I kind of ask them to gather all their marketing collateral, their print pieces, their ads, their signage, um, you know, we'll do maybe a screenshot of their, their uh, web page, their social media, everything. And I put it up on a board 
And then I create a second board, which has collateral from an established brand, like a national brand, like Starbucks I have here, for example. Sure. And the, it, the difference is so apparent so quickly when you see from a visual standpoint, how, you know, a company like Starbucks, everything really hangs together down to the apron or even the napkins in the store. Like these brands are 100% faithful to their brand guidelines. Yeah. I'll say like, even when I worked at Estee Lauder, it was down to every conference room for every brand looked like the brand. So every conference room throughout the building looked different based on what the brand was. And I would even say that people dressed like their brand. <laughs> like I remember like you'd have people who went from say Estee Lauder brand, which was a little bit more old school so they'd look a little more corporate and then if they got transferred over to work for say like mac all of a sudden they were wearing all black and they looked really artsy like people like it was true blue like very faithful to the brand so Interesting. when you take all your stuff and you put it up on a board and you compare it to something like a starbucks you see very quickly maybe how disjointed your marketing pieces are versus something that looks very cohesive um, Stacy, is there a tool that you use to do something like this or a generator or something that you can plug in or is it just uh, you physically have to? Yeah, no, you physically have to do it and you just have to collect the pieces, but it's not hard. You know, you can, you know, for Starbucks for this, you know, I just went online and pulled all, you know, screenshots of different stuff and just put it together on a, on a board. Sure. Um, and then obviously you just have to work throughout the organization to collect all the, the marketing collateral that, that you guys have um, yeah. for your own brand. And you just want to kind of ask yourself, like if I was a stakeholder and I saw all these different things, I got this direct mail piece and then I got an email that had this banner and, um, you know, then I walked in the building and there was signage. Would I know all these things are coming from one place? That's kind of your litmus test. Like, does it all look like it's coming from one place? Sounds like a great uh, activity to do. Yeah, it's a really good exercise. And just, you know, visually, it you get it right away. Yeah. Um, and then you want to also take that deeper dive and look at the messaging and make sure there's one consistent tone of voice, that it all has kind of one personality, that it all, um, you know, that it doesn't sound disjointed. Um, so, you know, I, I see a lot of brands where, different people write different things, you know, different people on the staff. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't sound like it's all one voice. Um, and as we discussed in the first step, we wanna just make sure again with your messaging that anything that is your unique selling proposition that you are touting that. So maybe that, you know, works into what your tagline is, um, but you wanna make sure that's coming through. And Stacey, how valuable are colors? So I, so I was going to say that now. So oh, if okay. you do this exercise and you find things are not, you know, cohesive enough, not there's that lack of consistency, it's a good idea. It's a big undertaking, but it's a good idea to create what's called like a style manual or a creative mm -hmm. standards guide or a style guide. Um, and that provides you with the standard for design elements so that would tell you, Scott, you know, like you were saying, what are the brand colors? Like what are the main colors? What do you use as the accent colors? What is the typography? You know, you have to make sure everybody knows these are our fonts because that helps people recognize your organization or your brand. Um, you know, how do you use the logo? How do you use it when in a situation where you have a print piece that's black and white? How mm -hmm. do you use it when it's color? How do you use the tagline? How do you put the tagline with the logo? So all those kinds of things would be in your style manual. And then there'd also be things around messaging. So like, what is your tone of voice? Are you corporate and sort of formal? Are you tongue in cheek and humorous? Are you um, friendly and warm? Like what is the personality of your brand and that's your tone of voice. You know, you think about it like the personality of a person. What is your brand about? And um, and that should be in your in your guide as well. And then even just the overall sort of lexicon for your brand. Like, what are the buzzwords that are associated with your brand? Like, what are the kind of terms and what's the language you use? 
when talking about your brand. So all that should be in there and everybody on the staff should have that. And if you use any outside contractors, they should have it so that everybody's sort of in lockstep and everything that comes out of your, your organization is consistent. Yeah, Stacey, I've got a great example of, uh, of the idea of having consistent tone. So uh, uh, one of the companies that we've worked for, you know, work, meets with uh, clients and they measure all their meetings by cups of coffee or cups of tea. So they, you know, have six, they, they measured 600,000 cups of tea that they had in last calendar year. And it just, to me, it just showed the impact of how often they're meeting with clients. Uh-huh. And um, I thought it was, you know, it was a, but it also showed that uh, actually, I think they may use tea, glasses of green tea or something like that. But it also showed that they were healthy, that they were drinking right. green tea as opposed to coffee or something. I just thought that was a really neat mm -hmm. uh, measurement. And it just showed a tone that they had and they were right. very consistent with it. So did that, um, that position, did that support what the brand was about? Was it a health oriented? Yes. Kind of come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you really just the subtext did express right. uh, kind of a theme to it that right. did talk about their mission, uh, which was getting out there to be with clients, but also healthy lifestyles. So yeah. I thought they, they really hit it on, hit on that really yeah. well. This, yeah. oh, it sticks with me for some reason. Yeah, yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, so moving on to step four, we're almost done. Um, so step four is about key performance indicators or KPIs. You might you might know KPIs. You know, it's it's about, and now's a good time. You can take the time to really dive into your data a little bit and look at what it's telling you about how your audience is engaging with you. So one of the beauties of using online tools. Um, for your marketing arsenal is that for all your own media, which is anything where you own the content, like your website or your social media, you can easily access and analyze all of your metrics, but people don't usually take the time to do it. So you're kind of operating off of gut versus really hard data, you know, evidence-based sort of, um, sort of decision-making. So I think that right now, because of where we are with the crisis, Maybe for a lot of the organizations out there, the only way that their stakeholders are engaging with them is through their website or their social media. There isn't face-to-face. -face. So it's really important to understand your metrics right now. So starting with your website, um, hopefully all organizations, their websites are enabled with Google Analytics. Um, so you would know that, you know, you can use their pro forma dashboards or you can create your own custom data sets, but it's really a good thing to learn. It really teaches you a lot about your website traffic. So one note I will say about Google Analytics or when you're doing really any data analysis, you really always want to compare it to something else. So like I, when I do my Google Analytics, I always compare it to the same period last year. Because if you look at numbers in a vacuum, they're not relative to anything. So you don't know if you've improved or declined. If you just look at the number of visitors to your, you know, your website that month, it, it might not mean anything to you in a vacuum. So you really need to always be comparing it to something else. Um, so some of the things that you can look at with Google Analytics, and there are so many, I won't cover them all off, but you can see what content on your site most of your visitors are going to. So you kind of have a sense of what's important to them, what they're trying to learn about your organization um, first. Um, you can look at the demographics and understand uh, more about who is coming to your site. And I just think it's interesting to look at what cities or towns the visitors are coming from, because for me, when I go to do PR or even advertising, it gives me cues about where I have a big audience. So it helps me target maybe some local publications in those cities and towns. If I see, I have a lot of traffic coming from that town. So, you know, I want to leverage that. Um, it also tells you what other sites are referring traffic to you. So maybe there's a site that lists your organization as a resource and it's sending, you know, you're getting a lot of clicks through from their site to your site. Um, maybe there's a certain media outlet that when they publish one of your articles, 
and you have a link in there, you're going to get a lot of traffic coming from that media outlet. You want to make sure you're cultivating those relationships with those other organizations, with that media outlet, because they're feeding you a lot of traffic. So, you know, you want to perpetuate that. Um, and if they happen to be like a really well-established organization or brand or media outlet, those are high quality inbound leads that are coming to your site. And that is gonna also help your Google rankings. So that's another plus. The other thing you can look at is what terms people are using when they search for you. So you kind of understand how they're thinking about you. And you can even take some of the information and kind of play it back when you create your messaging, kind of play it back to them. If those are terms they associate with you, you can play it back in your messaging. Um, you can see when most tra traffic is coming from, to you. So, you know, like say, let's say for some reason, Thursdays, you get like a spike in traffic for whatever reason. You know, if you have something important you want to add to your website, it's good to do it on a Thursday. So that's another good thing to look for. There's, there's so much more, but the key thing is the data is just data. It doesn't mean anything unless you connect the dots. That's where... The, the really important piece is you have to connect the dots. You have to analyze them. Um, and so hopefully you can understand when you do connect the dots, what it's telling you. Um, you know, what if I see these three factors, what is that telling me and how do I need to respond accordingly? Um, another great thing in terms of your website that people forget about, and this is a good time if you have the time, to comb through your mobile site and make sure it's rendering correctly, that it's user-friendly. We always kind of, for, we are so focused on our website, sometimes we forget about our mobile sites and we know how much people are using their phones. So yeah. always make sure that you're always doing that checkup on your mobile site as well um, to make sure it's, it, it's in good shape. And then for social media, in terms of your metrics, you know, social media is great, obviously, to raise awareness. And it's also great because it does allow you to have that two-way conversation. You can have a real dialogue with your stakeholders. Um, so like for Facebook, for example, with their insights, um, again, you can see demographic information. You can see when most people are coming to your page, even what time. So that tells you when to post things. Um, and you can see how your paid efforts are doing versus your organic stuff to know if it's worthwhile. Um, it's kind of interesting. I always like to, for my clients, I look at the social media data versus their website and I compare. And a lot for my clients, a lot of times, like the cities are different, you know, in terms of the rankings, you see people, traffic coming from different places, the demographics are different. So it's always interesting to sort of compare um, between your website and your social media, who your stakeholders are. Don't assume it's the same. And something else, just in terms of, you know, you're doing your reorganization and you're kind of doing your, your closet cleaning or whatever, Google mm -hmm. alerts, if you've forgotten to do them, make sure that you have those set up, not only for your organization, but for your competitors um, or maybe some of your key donors so that you know what's going on with them or your grantees. Um, sure. So you'll get, you know, as everybody knows with Google alerts, you'll get email alerts when Google finds new results, you know, it's web pages or um, articles or blogs that match your search terms. So that's just kind of another housekeeping um, tip that people may have forgotten about when they've been so mired in the, the daily weeds. Yeah. So the last step, number five, is kind of where the rubber hits the road. And that has to do with implementing what you've just learned. You know, really, what are the implications of all this stuff for future planning? So you've completed those four steps of your audit, and now you have all your analyses and you've drawn some conclusions. So now you have to turn your, your learning into action, right. your audit into action. So again, like we said throughout, you have to be open-minded about what you've learned and really think about where you have some work to do. Um, and it's great to just kind of create a timing and action calendar where you assign the action points to different people on your staff. Um, and most importantly, you know, you create the action plan, then you have to monitor it for results. You can't manage what you can't measure. So you really have to make sure you're coming back and, and monitoring how, how you're doing with your action plan. And then when the time is right, I'm not saying we want to go through this crisis again, but 
at some point you should do another brand audit and see again, you know, how you've moved the needle, just like, you know, you have this baseline. So see how, how much progress you've made. Excellent. Well, this is um, great. Yeah. Yeah. So now is the time you may not get the time again, take everything you're learning, put it into action and share it with your staff, share it with your board um, and use it to create your future strategy and come out on the other side better than you were going in. Fantastic. So, yeah, I was just going to say, how can we follow up with you? Or, you know, if there, again, if there are any questions, feel free to contact Stacey directly, or you can contact uh, uh, Harvest Development and uh, we'll get the questions to Stacey. Uh, but again, this, this was fantastic. It was, it is a great exercise to do when uh, we, we might be looking for things to, to fill our day. And, uh, and I really think there's a, a huge value in, in everything you uh, you talked about it. so uh, I really appreciate uh, this sure. putting it all uh, in one place in an organized way this was great yeah and it's not like I said you know not even just having the time but the distance is so important you know when you're in the weeds it's so hard to to really at the same you know be at the 6,000 feet and down the weeds at the same time so to really be able to take that step back and and look at your brand in a different way or your organization and you've had a little time away from the day to day is is it's interesting to, yeah. to be able to look at things through that lens. Great. All right. Well, super. Well, thank you very much. It's great to spend some time with you on this. Uh, we hope uh, everyone out there uh, appreciates this. And uh, again, contact you can contact Stacy directly or contact uh, Harvest Development Group with any uh, questions you might have. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Scott. Thanks. Take care. Be safe. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.